Hello, Sid Roth here with Desiree Ayers, and Desiree was literally, you might say, had it in her genes to be a stunt woman because her father was one of the top stuntmen in Hollywood. He was actually a, a double for Adam West. Yes, in the Batman. hit series Batman. So he used to, when I was a little girl, I was only in second grade, he'd come and pick us up in the Batmobile car, and then we'd always go down to the set and watch them film, and we'd get to slide down the bat pole and uh, play with the costumes, but it was a very exciting time for us. Uh, but you were not only groomed to be a stunt woman, you were groomed to be a psychic. I guess your parents weren't Christians. No, yes, I, I grew up, I became a stunt woman, and then also my, my dad was into Christian science, my mom was into psychics, card reading, she'd bring different gurus to the house, she'd have all kinds of meditation courses, and uh, all kinds of occult books were in the house, and um, I ended up getting into uh, something called astro projection, and this is probably when I took a turn in my life. Uh, of not wanting to seek out spiritually, because what had happened was astral projections when you actually leave your body. And, uh, when and, and by the way, some of you that think this is ridiculous, there are universities in the United mm -hmm. States and in the former Soviet Union mm -hmm. that actually teach people how to do these things. Go ahead. Yes, and I was with a group of psychics and we were learning to mind read. I was only 16 years old. I was mm -hmm. a young one being groomed for that. and. Uh, um, you know, so they have all kinds of exercises that you do, and, and what you're around definitely influences you. And I didn't plan to actually leave my body, but I think because of being around so much of this activity, one day when I went to go to bed, all of a sudden I found myself up on the ceiling, and it terrified me. I came back in my body, I ran over and told my brother what had happened. He said, oh, you astral projected, let me give you a book on it. And I started reading it. He said, go try to see, uh, you know, mom in California. We were living in Florida at the time. He was suggesting mm -hmm. different things for me to do. But every time I'd leave my body, within a second, I would be in space. I mean, I knew it was space. Mm -hmm. And then I encountered some terrifying beings. You know, I've seen horror flicks. Nothing on the horror flick compared to what I saw and what was wrapped around me. It was... It was giant serpent-like creatures that were the size of massive buildings and that tall. They went on forever and they were trying to kill me. I knew they were trying to kill me. I was trying to get back into my body. They would train This you. is worse than uh, Rod Serling ever did on his TV shows. <laughs> it was pretty horrifying. It really was. And for a 16-year-old kid who had yeah. never done drugs, I wasn't into drinking, anything like that. I was just... I was doing things that they were teaching, focus on the white light. I'd focus on the white light, nothing happened. I started to do my So you just kind of hung out there in space and you don't know to get how to. my body. That's, that's got to, I mean, what if you never made it back? I, mean, I don't, go ahead. Yeah, th th I, and that's what it felt like was happening. But I would say mm -hmm. over and over again, God is love, God is love, God is love. And that still wasn't working. But somehow after hours, I got back into my body and I said, I will have nothing to do with any of the spirituality stuff. And I remember saying to God, God, until I'm more spiritually advanced, I don't want to mess with anything. And so I just kind of went on to live my life as a kid and getting into surfing and sports and boyfriends. But I had Did some... You, you went to college, right? Yeah, I went to college. And by the time I was in college, because I wasn't feeding myself spiritually, I started to feed myself physically. I call it the number one spiritual disease that there is. It's called God hunger. We're created to fellowship with God. And if we don't, I think people run to uh, drugs, alcohol, workaholism, all kinds of other things. And I was running to food. So I ate and ate and ate and I became so big that the only piece of clothing I could wear were my overalls. I, I, I probably put on over 30 pounds in less than a year. That's got to be kind of devastating for a young woman with a social life and wanting to get married. And so what would you do about well, it? Well, what was devastating was when I decided I, I did one commercial before I gained all the weight. And I was making thousands of dollars in residual checks mm -hmm. while I was in college. And I thought, why stay in college? 
why don't I go back to Hollywood, I got all the connections, and make a bunch of money. So I went back and I told my dad, I decided that I'm going to be a stunt woman. And he started to laugh. He said, Desiree, he goes, who are you going to double? Because the actresses are so skinny. He goes, there's nobody as big as you. And I became obsessed with losing the weight. I thought, I will do whatever it takes. So I started to run marathons. I'd run up to 10 miles a day. I would do two-mile ocean swims. I got into diuretics, laxatives, throwing up my food, and... Wait, wait a second. From what I understand, this, this purging yourself or throwing up your yeah. food, that's life-threatening stuff. It, it, it definitely is. What happened was I ended up becoming very thin. I became one of Hollywood's top working stunt women. But eventually on the inside, I was destroying my liver and, and you're doing horrible things to your inside How organs. How serious a problem is this in society? Oh, you're not going to believe some of these statistics. Eating disorders affect 5 to 10 million Americans, adolescent girls and women, approximately 1 million boys. Uh, and men. It has, uh, according to a recent study, over half the females between the age of 18 and 25 would prefer to be run over by a truck than be fat. Two-thirds surveyed would rather be mean or stupid. 19% of college women struggle for this, and it's also been shown that 80% of American women are not happy with their appearance. So I think there's a whole self-image problem here, but the good news is God has the answer to be free, and, and that's really what I want to share because and, it's but, been... But, but you know, in, in reading your your book, uh, you you looked beautiful, you're, you're one of the top stunt women yes. in Hollywood, uh, you actually won a bikini contest, yes. but you didn't feel thin. No, I didn't. And, and I can remember that day quite well when I did the bikini contest. I was actually with a boyfriend who was in a surf contest and I was there to watch him, but I was getting bored watching him and they had a bikini contest. So I decided to go enter it. Well, I end up, I'm 22 years old and I look very physically fit. I win the contest. When he comes back out, I have a trophy, I have a boogie board, <laughs> I have all these clothes. I'm like, hey, look, I won the bikini contest. And he said to me, he said, Desiree, you won? You gotta be kidding. Next to those 15 and 16 year old hard bodies, you won? And I was already bulimic. I already had a terrible self image. And I just went from feeling good one moment to feeling I was fat. I, I thought, you know, maybe I'm the aging person. The judges felt sorry for me. But I just viewed myself as this overweight, heavy person. Uh, Desiree, hold that. And was thought. devastated. There are people that are watching me right now. Either you or you know someone in this situation. And I tell you, that addictions of food are just one of the things that try to fill that void inside of us. There are addictions to drugs, there's addictions to sex, there are addictions in so many arenas of life, but there is a supernatural victory. Yes. It's not the next yeah. best diet coming down the pike. Don't go away, we'll be right back after these words. Hello YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word, it means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Desiree Ayers, and uh, it's just unbelievable what is going on in the world in reference to fat and why you, you know, people watch TV and they want to be thin like everyone else. They want to conform to everyone else. And Desiree Ayers, you were no different than anyone else, except uh, you were on the screen. You were one of the top stunt women in Hollywood. Um, and and uh, you, you finally threw uh, uh, purging yourself, you're bulimic, and uh, you know, I mean, and really life threatening things. You got thin and you became a top Hollywood stunt woman. Uh, your social life wasn't so terrific. You had a, an alcoholic boyfriend uh, that was abusive. Yes, I was um, being beat up at the time, and it, I really hit an all time low. I, I think when women get themselves in abusive situations, they're so embarrassed about it. 
I didn't want my family to know because I know they think, how did she get herself into this? And he had threatened that if I left, he'd kill himself. And I didn't want his death on my hands. And so I stayed until the abuse got so bad, I thought, you know, it's okay if he kills himself. And so I know that <laughs> sounds horrible. So then I thought, I'm gonna get out of here. But then he threatened to kill me, and I wanted to live, but so I stayed. But the abuse got so bad that I did not care if I lived or died. And that's when I made the escape from my life. And I spent six months of my life living at one friend's house to another, to another, to an apartment, to a hotel, trying to escape this. And I was also in the, you know, the bulimia, anorexia, starving myself, not eating for 10 days at a time. 10 days at a time? I'd go 10 days without eating. And How did uh, you have the energy to be a stone woman? Well, I would check myself into fasting farms and I would just stay there and fast. And I'd pretend wait, wait, like- you, you went to acting school. I want you to tell me Well, about this that. was a big change. When I went to acting school, I met this guy, and I just became crazy about him. Now, I, now this guy <laughs> is right here, Mel. This, this is my now This is the husband. one you became crazy about. Did he know you were crazy? Did you know she was crazy about no. you or just crazy? No, <laughs> I, I had no idea. I was, I was kind of, you know, just trying to take acting classes, and uh, I had... Uh, uh, I had a really powerful experience with God, so I was just trying to keep my focus on what I was doing. And Desiree was walking around as a little beach bunny in the in the class and trying to get my attention. And I just were you really trying to get his attention? Oh, absolutely. Why? Well, I wanted to marry him. <laughs> you didn't even, you didn't know him. I know, but I called my mom. I said, I met the guy I'm going to marry. This is it. He's the one. I was just crazy about him. I just wanted to marry him. So I would. So was he interested in no, all? No, no. How, how were you dressing back then? I was dressing in leopard skins, low cut, high cut, trying to be all, you know, trying to get him to look at me. And he. Did would, you know she was trying to get you to look at me? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, uh, Desiree, there was more <laughs> cotton in the top of an aspirin bottle than what she had on her, <laughs> on her figure. So uh, we would just go, oh, here she comes again. And uh, I just try to keep my focus on what I was doing, you know, I just. Uh, God had made a difference in my life, and uh, so, but Desiree is a wonderful person. She had a bad self-image at the time, but on the outside, she was sweet and wonderful and kind, and, and all, she had all those great qualities. She just didn't see herself like that. Okay, Desiree, you know, somehow you know, that you're yeah. going to marry this man. He doesn't know it. In fact, he's not showing any interest in you whatsoever. Not at all. And one day, your cousin invites you to go to church. You're, you're not even a church type person. No, Why did you no. go? Well, I said uh, immediately when he said church, I thought of Mel, and Mel carried a Bible. So I just thought of him. So I said, <sighs> What kind of church is it? He said, Christian. I thought, okay, that's good. And I said, well, where's the church located? And I thought, if he says Westwood, that's where Mel lived. I knew everything about him. I was a stalker, basically. <laughs> so I saw, if he says Westwood, I'm going. He said Westwood. I said, I'd love to go to church with you Sunday. But I had never been in what's called a spirit-filled church where the presence of God is. I'd been to everything. I mean, I, I'd been to Catholic churches. I went to Temple Friday night. I went to all these different places. But what I walked into was the literal presence of God. And during their worship, I'm crying. I don't know why I'm crying. And then all of a sudden I see on the front row, I see Mel there and his hands are up in the air like this. And I'm thinking, why are his hands up in the air? I remember I just kept thinking, why are they up in the air? Now, of course, you Who wouldn't know from a Jewish background. We know King David said, lift holy hands to God, yeah. but it looked kind of weird to you. Well, I thought he must be a monk. He must be somebody very spiritual. You know, who is this guy that I've fallen in love with? Uh, but then afterwards, we, we ended up talking, and I think it was just a, our second date was to Crenshaw Christian Church with Dr. Fred Price. and. From there, a couple of weeks later, we were in a car off to Vegas and got married. That's fast, Mel. Yeah, we don't tell people to do it that way. Uh. <laughs> yeah, we don't recommend that. <laughs> but, but. Okay, so you're off on your honeymoon, and uh, what was going on with this uh, uh, purging yourself and weight control? And well, I kept it hidden from him until about three months into the marriage. And I think that's one thing, when you have the Holy Spirit, there's like conviction that started to happen. And I felt like, and I think this is the first step to be free of any type of addictive behavior. The first step is you tell someone. And I think this was a big part of my recovery process. Because I told Mel, I said, I, I was throwing up my food that night. He came home and I was crying. I said, this is what's going on. And he said, Desiree, we're gonna pray. 
And wait, wait a second, Mel. I mean, she was holding this back from you. You barely knew her. You're married. Well, why are you being such a nice guy? <laughs> I didn't. You know, she had said, "I'm I have I'm an anorexic and bulimic," and I'd never heard that before. I didn't even know what it was, so I wasn't. I thought. I don't even know what that is. Well, whatever it is, let's just pray. God, mm -hmm. God will answer prayer. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I led her in a prayer, and she didn't know how to pray. I told her to pray. She didn't know how to pray. So I said, okay, I'm going to pray, and you just, you just agree with me. You say amen, and I agree at the end of the prayer. And so I prayed and just asked God to uh, go into those places in her soul that needs healing and restoration. You know, everybody's broken inside. They have a hunger for God. And uh, he, he did that. You know, it didn't happen overnight, but God started to move in her life you by know, His Spirit. I want to understand exactly what Desiree did, because there are many of you that are having problems with addictions of all kinds, and there is not some the next diet coming down the road. There really is a God, and He really does love you. He really does have a purpose for your life, and He wants to help you. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. We'll be back right after this word. Mm -hmm. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth with Mel and Desiree Ayers, and Desiree is or was one of the top stunt women in Hollywood, but she ran into a problem. She was grossly overweight. This is a problem that many men and women have throughout the world. And so she isn't proud of it, but she uh, did this purging. Uh, what's the definition of bulimic and anorexic? Anorexics where you don't eat, you starve yourself, and bulimia is where you throw up your food, you do diuretics, you purge what you eat, you overeat, then you get rid of it. How in the world have you stayed the way I see you are right now for 23, 23 years? 23 I've been completely years. healed for 23 years. After we prayed that prayer, the next day I went to a church and the pastor had this girl get up and share her testimony. And that's why I like to do testimony. She shared how Jesus had healed her from anorexia and bulimia. And the, Bible does say that God is not a respecter of persons. And I do want to say this to you. If you're out there and you are battling an addiction, God healed me. He's not a respecter of persons, just like he heard the girl that testified. Now I'm, I got healed. Now I'm testifying. God's going to do the same for you. He's going to set you free. There's hope. That's why I wrote this book, God Hunger, is to share the good news on how you can be set free. It's simple Bible steps that are so easy to follow. But I want you to be encouraged. You don't have to be a drug addict. You don't have to be addicted to alcohol. You don't have to be overweight. You don't have to have that torment in your mind where you think about yourself all the time. You can be free. And I encourage you to pick up this book because it will help you. Mel, you lived with Desiree while she was in process of getting free. Um, I'm sure there were ups and downs. What did you do personally when you saw she got down, when she fouled up? Uh, am I right? Did you yes, foul I up? Had a, I had a six months battle, and that's okay. what I testify in this book about. What, six what, months. Of what did you see and what did you say? I, I simply remembered the, the experience that I had with God and how it changed my life. And I knew that He was real. And I knew if I didn't quit on Him, He wouldn't quit on me. And so we would pray and we would stay in faith and we, I'd continue to encourage her and just let her know that God is real. He loves you. He won't give up on you if you don't give up on yourself. And so when she was down, I'd pick her up and then we would pray and we would continue to speak the Word of God and have the Word of God in the house. And we saw God faithful to us. He was faithful. He, he showed up and He healed and He set her free. And, you know, one of the main things, Sid, is, the, is what you think every day. The battleground's right here in the mind. And you, she was tormented in her mind, thinking about food, thinking about the way she looked. Obsessed. All her attention was on herself. But when we found that you could have a personal relationship with the living God, our mind was not on ourself anymore because we had someone else who was greater than us. And uh, he brought joy into our life mm -hmm. and peace in our mind and mm -hmm. our hearts. And I just saw Desiree start to recover and she started getting more strength and confidence. 
And, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't overnight, but there was great restoration and recovery uh, on a daily basis. Desiree, um, you now teach others. Yes. Why do you teach others to get rid of addictions of all kinds? Because I know what it's like to be bound, and I know what it's like to be free, and I'm so grateful for what God has done for me, and I want to see other people be set free, and that's such a are, joy. Are many people being oh, set free that, so that, that learn what you teach? So many. We've seen people uh, uh, set free of not only being over 200 pounds overweight and coming into their right body weight, not only that, not only healed of anorexia, not only healed of bulimia, but also smoking, alcohol, drug addictions. I've had people that uh, have taken these principles and applied it to compulsive spending, gambling. So any type of addictive behavior. Give, give me a specific person that comes to mind that uh, you taught and what happened to this well, person. Well, Linda. Well, well, Linda's testimony was so wonderful because I met her and she had a brain tumor and mm -hmm. She had suffered from bulimia, but she came to our house one night and we just praised God, we, we prayed for her. Not only did she get healed of, of her brain tumor and get set free of an eating disorder, she met uh, through a class I had at that time, she met her husband who had an eating disorder that God had healed both of them. They're now married, they had children together, and they're really living life on top. It's. How do you feel when you see someone that is just battling, 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 and then they p apply the principles of God's Word and intimacy with God, and they get free? How do you feel? Well, it, it's such a joy, because it's, mm -hmm. it's, not only are they set free, now they're going to go and share the good news with others, and that's what Jesus is. He's good news. So to get to share the good news of the gospel, it's such a joy. Uh, Mel, you, uh, you're a pastor of a church now, yes. you and Desiree, and uh -huh. you told me there's something, uh, it's always going on, but there is an increase in people being physically healed. There is an increase in yes. people having intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. uh, give me an example. We have a, a lot of people in the entertainment industry coming to our, our ministry, and they come into the service that we hold and uh, the, it's the presence of God there uh, gives them a peace and a joy that they start to hunger for. And they start spending time with Him and they start to see the, the places in their soul that needs healing, physical healings. We have people that are healed of, we had a documented person that was healed of AIDS. We, had, uh, we have people that have cancer. A woman came in for healing of her knees and she had just found out she had liver cancer. The doctor gave her very little time to live. She got completely healed of liver cancer, documented she's completely well now to live her, the rest of her life. And so we see an increase in that. We, we have a resurrected Messiah. He's resurrected, and to talk about a resurrected Messiah, you have to have resurrection power. Now, now in Hollywood, there are many uh, Jewish people like yes. I am. Yes. Uh, tell me about a, uh, a Jewish person that got healed. I, was, I used to be roommates with a Jewish person, and uh, he had 2,400 in his eyes. And I'd always tell him about the Messiah. And he told me one day, he said, if the Messiah will heal my eyes, I'll believe. And in seven days later, he had 20 20 vision. And he's a. He's a Did he honor his word? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. He, he asked the Messiah to come into his life and to make himself known to him. And he did that. And he's, he lives that life today as a Christian. He lives here in uh, North Carolina, in uh, fact. Desiree, tell me what, when you talk about the presence of God, Tell me what you really mean. Explain that to someone that's never experienced the presence of God. Well, you know, the name of our church is In His Presence, so it's hard to miss God on that fact, uh, not to have the presence, but the presence of God is a tangible, real experience with God, which is really our prayer for you today, that you would know the height, the depth, the width, the length of His unconditional love that He has for you. He created you. He is your Father. God Almighty created you, and He created you to have fellowship with Him, and life will not work out right for you. You'll have hurts and unnecessary 
scary pains that God is not meant for you to experience. But it's so important that you have that intimate, real tangible, you can feel him, you can sense him. He's created angels to guard and protect you. He's an amazing God. And Desiree, can I confess something <laughs> okay. to everyone? Now I'm gonna do this on uh, international television right now. I am addicted. I am addicted to want more and more of God's presence. There is not a close second. And I, I, I understand what Mel and Desiree are talking about because His presence is pouring through the television right now. It, it, it's His love. His presence is His love. And when, right now, if you believe that Jesus died for your sins and you repent of your sins, and you ask Him to live inside of you and be your Lord and Messiah, it's done. 